Two weeks ago, I gave you all a modeling exercise to attempt where the objective was to model the specific object with subdifferently topology. Today, I'll share the solution with you folks. All right, so we're going to start off by creating a cylinder and we're going to make sure this has 32 vertices. I'm just then going to pull that face down and scale it in just a bit and just make a few more adjustments. I'll then inset the caps at the bottom as well as at the top. And now we will create another cylinder. This time we want to have eight vertices and we're just going to scale that down. And now we are just going to reposition our 3D cursor. And now we'll just send the newly created cylinder to that 3D cursor. Then I'm just going to make some adjustments to the scale. I'll grab the face at the bottom there and just scale it up to create that smaller conical volume. I'll make a few adjustments to that and review it from different angles just to make sure everything looks okay. I'm just making sure that it's sitting roughly on the vertices there so that when I combine this using booleans, it's going to be less of a hassle to clean it up. So just double checking things. And once I'm happy with this, I'm just going to go ahead and drop some loops. So before I go ahead and do that, let me just apply the boolean modifier here. So I'll just select that smaller conical volume and then I'll just set it to union and apply it and hide that cylinder. Now I'm going to just drop some edge loops here. Drop a couple on the top as well. And now using the J key, I'm just going to connect these points. So continuing to connect things. Now I'm just going to use the knife tool here to connect those two points there. And we'll just add another loop there that's going to behave as a control loop. Now using the J key, continuing to connect things on that side wall. And now we have uh, some misaligned vertices there. So we'll just deal with that in a second. So I'll just go ahead and merge to last. And then I'll just insert those faces there and extrude it in. Just add a couple more inserts just to hold that shape. So there are some vertices which are not combined. So I'm just going to select the whole thing and say merge by distance. And now I'll just add a couple of control loops here just to hold that shape nicely. So I'm just adding a subsurface modifier over this just to check. Now I'll go ahead and insert that face in the middle. Just checking to see how the shading is and that looks uh, pretty good to me. Just throwing on a shiny matte cap and we don't seem to have any artifacts. Now I forgot to clean up that end gone there, I'll come back and do it later. Just insert that face once again. And now I'm going to want to connect some points. Uh, but before we go ahead and do that, let me just extrude this portion on top to create that shape in the middle. And again, going ahead and adding some control loops to tighten things up. That looks good. Got to add a control up here. So just gonna go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. 
So now what I'm doing is I'm just rotating this so that I can delete the faces in the other three quadrants and then mirror them. So I'm just going to connect the edges together like so, so that I can delete uh, some of those faces. So since this is uh, radially symmetrical, I'm just going to work in one quadrant and mirror it around. So I just accidentally connected the wrong edges here. So just going to go ahead and do that again. Just make sure that I connect the right ones this time. And then I'm going to make some selections here and get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the faces and then mirror it. I'll apply transformation, reposition my modifiers. Let's go ahead and apply that mirror modifier. And there we have it, a subtly friendly and watertight mesh. I hope you found this useful, and if you'd like to attempt exercises like this one, be sure to keep an eye out on the community tab as I share them there.